fertilization. For some of us, it represents a miracle, sent down by God as a blessing. For others, it's the world's worst hangover. But for us biology students, it represents the genesis of every living human on this planet. Specifically, the fusion of a sperm and egg cell resulting in the formation of a diploid cell we know as a zygote, the story of us all. During intercourse, an approximate 200 million to 400 million sperm cells are ejaculated into the vagina, minus the few million that leave the vagina and the few million that die in its acidic environment. For the next 30 minutes to 2 hours, the surviving sperm cells beat their flagella, propelling them through the vagina and through the cervix. Once through the cervix, the uterine contractions help direct the sperm cells to the uterine tubes, of which only about 200 million will make it to the secondary oocyte, a cell in an ovary that may undergo meiotic division to form an ovum. On their way to the uterus, millions will die. Thankfully, after managing to swim past what only seems to be like a set of death traps, the uterine wall will rhythmically contract in order to aid the sperm to its journey towards the egg. Once the egg has stopped playing hard to get, resident cells from the female's immune system mistaken the sperm for foreign invaders, resulting in the death of many more of our beloved little friends. The rest of the courageous infantry, or should I say marines, split up into two groups, each heading to either fallopian tube, although one will be empty. But how do sperm cells know to split up rather than all head towards one of the fallopian tubes? Studies have shown that there are hundreds of genes that code for odorant, scent, in vertebrates. But what's interesting in these odorants are thought to be function on sperm cells. So basically, besides the obvious characteristics that are on the, on the sperm, such as flagella, sperms also use their hypothetical nose to guide them, with the scent of the egg acting as a map. Now, the beating cilia in the fallopian tube aid in the egg towards the uterus. This counteracts the sperm's direction just like a sprinter having to run against the wind. So what happens is chemicals released in the reproductive tract and uterus wall causes a membrane surrounding the sperm head and acrosome to break down and change, causing the sperm to be fluid resistant. It's like that ridiculously hot love of your life and finally agreeing to go on a date just to take you back home and be an incredible tease. And just like men, we either give up or this just fuels us even more. And in, in the case of our tenacious little swimmers, the sperms become hyperactive and start to beat their flagella much faster. Now upon reaching the egg, the sperm begin to push through the corona radiata, coming in contact with the zona pellucida, which is the outer layer of the egg. The zona pellucida is lined with proteins that act as a lock, while the sperm heads act as a key. Now each species have their own unique lock and key system, in which gametes of the same species recognize each other. Once contacting the zona pellucida, receptor proteins on the surface, called ZP3, bind with proteins that are expressed in the head of the spermatozoa. This binding triggers the acrosomal reaction, which results in the release of digestive enzymes allowing the sperms to dig their way through the zona pellucida and into the perivitellin space. The first sperm to come in contact with the egg cell membrane will fertilize it. This results in the activation of slow and fast block polyspermy. Fast block polyspermy involves the depolarization of the oocyte's membrane, which prevents other spermatozoa from fusing. Process of slow block polyspermy includes an influx of calcium ions to be released from storage areas inside the cell. This triggers a reaction where the cortical granules in the egg cell plasma membrane fuse with the membrane and release their contents, rendering ZP3 inactive, therefore resulting in an impermeable zona pellucida. Just like your ex-girlfriend changes the locks after she dumps you for being a control freak, and your key that once worked is pretty much useless, now you could break in, but that's a different story. As the spermatozoan enter the oocyte, the male genetic material that was once stored in the head of the sperm spreads out while a new membrane forms around it, creating the male pronucleus. The oocyte undergoes meiosis II and forms the female pronucleus. The genetic material in both pronucleus form into 23 chromosomes. As the two pronuclei form, threads of microtubules start to pull them together until they fuse with each other and a unique genetic code is produced. This new single cell is the zygote.